What's up, Closer Nation? Man, I love you guys. All right, today I'm gonna give you the secret sauce behind setting a sales appointment. You know, when I started out in my, my professional sales career, I was a loan officer. And I watched all these other loan officers call real estate agents, because if you're a mortgage person, uh, the best referral, the best referral partner you can get, the best client you can get, is a real estate agent. I always looked at it this way. If I treated my real estate agents as clients and I, tr then, and, and I treated their clients as if they were like the benefits. So think of it this way. I treated my real estate agents as if they were my kids. Okay, so my kids, I gotta feed them, I gotta take care of them, I gotta make sure they're happy, I gotta make sure they're doing their, their chores and everything else that we can get the household running. But my grandkids, which is how I looked at my clients from the real estate agents, my grandkids, they're only here for the summer. It's all fun and games, they can stay up as late as they want, I'm not really responsible for them. And at the end of the summer, they go away, they go back to their parents' house and they're responsible for them. But I treated the real estate agents as if they were my kids, right? Because the clients, they come and they go, they buy a house, they get a mortgage, I may not hear from them for three to five years if I ever hear from them again, but a good real estate agent can send me one or two deals a month and a great real estate agent can send me five or six deals a month, right? And so I wanted to make sure that I took care of the real estate agent. So anyway, back to the point of the story here, I would watch a, and how I got so many real estate agents, which I worked with hundreds of them, which is how I built my mortgage career and how I started off online as well, the way that I built those relationships was a lot different than how other loan officers built their deals. Now, listen, if you're not a loan officer, if you're not a real estate agent, you still wanna pay attention to this video because what I'm about to say is pristine knowledge from experience and wisdom, okay? So understand this. Uh, other loan officers would call real estate agents and say, hey, it's John Doe. I work over here at ABC Mortgage. I'd like to buy you a cup of coffee and talk about how I can benefit your business. And you know what? Sometimes broke ass agents with nothing to do, they'd be like, all right, I'll take a free cup of coffee. I'll listen to you. When all they wanted was a free cup of coffee. They were in it for the cup of coffee. They were in it just because they were bored and hoping that you could bring something to them. See, I pitched them a little different when I set the sales appointment. Okay, I didn't pitch them on me doing business with them. I didn't pitch them on them giving me their loans. Chances are they were already working with another loan officer anyway. Think about that, that's typically how it happens. Like if they're already doing business, they're already doing it with somebody. So I gotta be Mr. Steal Your Girl, right? I gotta be like that guy. And so I gotta stand out. If I'ma steal your girl, I gotta bring bigger, bigger value. I gotta bring a bigger value to the equation. You see what I'm saying? So here's the thing. I would call them up and say, hey John, I saw the ads that you have in the Sunday newspaper. That's how long ago I was doing mortgages because I was really calling agents that advertise the Sunday newspaper. And while the ad looks good, my professional expertise as an advisor, I can show you how to get that same ad with the same amount of money you're already paying to the Dallas Morning News. I can show you how to get more customers from that by just changing a few words out and making the image pop a little bit better. Would you be interested in sitting down with me at my office? No fee, no nothing. I don't want any money from you. I don't have anything to sell you, but I'm gonna show you how you can get more bang for your buck out of the ads that you're putting in the newspaper. Because look, if you look at your ad, almost every other agent is running something similar. I'm going to show you how to get yours to stand out in the customer's eyes. Who's going to say no to that? No one. That's why I had hundreds of agents sending me deals. No one. Literally no one. But see, I didn't call them and say, let me talk to you about how I can do mortgages for your clients and give you a cup of coffee and some donuts and maybe feed you some tacos on Tuesday, right? Like all these other loan officers were doing. Instead, I was saying, hey, you're already doing something that's valuable. Let me show you how to get more bang for your buck and benefit you. Now, I didn't get turned down for these appointments. Now, not every single real estate agent that came in ended up doing business with me, but I didn't get turned down for the appointment, okay? Here's why, because when I pitched them on the appointment, the appointment, the benefit of the appointment wasn't a free cup of coffee. Hell, anybody can afford a cup of coffee. The benefit of the appointment wasn't for them to give me more business. You know, they can give their business anywhere. The benefit of the appointment was for me to help them make more money. See, you got, it's like Zig Ziglar. He said a long time ago, you gotta tune in to what's in it for me FM, right? W-I-I-M, W-I-I-F-M. I said, I think I said it right. What's in it for me, okay? You gotta get them tuned in. So when you're setting an appointment, you can't talk about what's in it for you. I like to sit down and sell you on why you should pay me. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Right? Nobody wakes up in the middle of the night 
and they're like, dude, we should give Suman more money. And if you do, by all means, my PayPal is paypal.me forward slash hardcore closer. Just send me as much as you want. But back to the point here, that's not what happens, right? Nobody in the middle of the night's like, you know what? I'd like to send business to a random loan officer. I'd like to send business to a random insurance agent. I'd like to send business to a financial planner, right? Like, no, 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 that's not what people do. People roll over in the middle of the night and go, fuck, how am I gonna get more business? How can I get more business for me? How can I get more money coming into my operation, right? That's what's in it for them. And so when I'm setting the appointment, I have to appeal to what's in it to them, right? So when I call the real estate agents and I said, hey, I can help you get more bang for your buck and make you more money, get more conversions and leads for you, how are they gonna turn that down? Because then they start thinking, oh shit, this can make me more money, I need to go meet this guy. When I meet business owners now and we pitch them on an appointment, same thing, it's like, hey, you're already doing X, I'm gonna show you how you can make two to three times the exposure, the leads, the money, whatever the, the bottom line is from what you're already doing. I'm not telling you to reinvent the wheel, I'm not telling you your ad sucks. I never called a real estate agent and was like, this fucking ad sucks, Judy. You fucking suck. You look just like everybody else, a bumbling moron, you're not getting, I never said that. I was like, you know, I see that you're advertised, so you're putting the effort out there. How would you like to have your ad look better than every other ad on the page and be able to get more business than anybody else you're advertising against. You see the inner appealing message, the underlying message that appeals to them to be able to get more money, which is what's for them, not for me. See, many of you right now, you're wondering why you can't get past the gatekeeper. You're wondering why you can't get an appointment because you're making it all about you, how they can bring something to you because you're tuned into what's in it for me, FM. Right, you gotta tune into what's in it for them, FM. Okay, that's where you gotta go. You gotta think, what benefit can I bring to their already existing business that would make them wanna meet me? And guess what? If you do mortgages, we'll just go back, we'll keep it congruent with the mortgage thing. If you do mortgages, the fact that you can do a mortgage is not a fucking benefit to them. So can Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, Quicken Loans, Rocket Mortgage, Loan Depot, Mellow, all those places can do mortgages. You're not unique. You think, well, we have FHA programs. So does fucking everybody else. Well, we do, we specialize in VA. Yeah, so does VA. So is Bank of America, so is everybody else. You're not special. You, well, we close in 14 days. So does TexasLending.com, all right? Everybody can do that shit, all right? You have to think what special skill set that you can bring to the equation. For me, it was advertising. I knew how to run good ads. I knew how to do good postcards. I had direct mail campaigns with me and my two pink dogs. I wish I still had a picture of it. That like skyrocket returns. I would send it to real estate agents. They go, how'd you dye those dogs pink? Well, I'm glad you asked, Judy. I'd like to show you how to get your mail pieces to stand out like mine so people call you in the same way. Oh, I'd love to meet you and talk about that. Yeah, yeah, right? Because I'm appealing to what's in it for them. Where a lot of you are appealing to what's in it for yourself. So when you set a sales, now, now let's say that you don't have advertising skills. First of all, you can go to jointheapex.com and you can learn the shit and get better at it. You can invest in yourself, right? But the second thing that you can do is start reading books, start brushing up on skills, figure out what skills you can bring to the, uh, to the process, right? And it's not how fast you can close. It's not your customer service. Well, I am extremely good at customer service. Good, because if you suck at customer service, you're not gonna have customers for very long anyway. That's not something to brag about. That's like, Bragging about paying child support. That's some shit you're supposed to do, motherfucker, right? Instead, you have to think of it this way. How can I benefit, what skill set do, what specific set of skills do I possess, right? What skill set do you possess that you can bring to the equation that's gonna bless them and benefit them? And once you get on that side of things, once you start appealing to that inner need that they have, which is always more money and more sales for them, right? More bottom line, whatever that is. Once you start appealing to that, you'll knock appointments out left and right. But then once you get to the appointment, you can't bait and switch them. I know, fuck, that's the whole key to making sales, isn't it? Bait and switch, that's what we all do. No, that's not what we all do. That's some shit the media has exploited us to make people think that we do. What we do is we go there, we deliver the tremendous amount of value, we give it to them for free, we show them how they can optimize their sub. Once they get the results, and this is called playing the long game, once they get the results, then we say, hey, now that I've helped you with that, how can you send some business over my way now that you have a little bit extra of it? Oh, were you already doing business with somebody? Why didn't he call you or why didn't she call you and show you how you could get your ads better? Oh, because they don't bring any fucking benefit to your life. I'll never forget there was a real estate agent who said, well, my, my brother is a loan officer, so I just use him. I said, I understand that, but how many deals have you given your brother this year? He said, well, I've given him probably 10 deals in the last three months. I said, he closed them all? Yeah. 
How many deals he sent you? Well, he hasn't sent me any. Oh, does he, does, he, does he give you cash back? Does he like give you cash in an envelope? I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm just wondering. Just, no. Well, why would he do that? I'm just taking care of my brother. I said, okay, so let me get this straight. Your brother's not benefiting your business and you're giving him business. I didn't just give you everything. I know I just gave you a little bit. I can help you so much more, but you're still going to continue to do business with him. What if you sent your brother three deals and sent me the other seven? He'd still be happy, wouldn't he? Well, he'd be upset, but I could probably work it out with him. But I can get you more business to where maybe you get to where you're doing 20 deals in every you know, quarter. And you can still send them 10 and you can send me the, the best 10. I'm going to want the best 10. See, all of a sudden, I'm showing them that the other person in the equation, Mr. Steal Your Girl over here, is showing them that the other person in the equation is not bringing value to the relationship. So why wouldn't they want to be in a valuable relationship with me? But first, I got to get them the results. That's called playing the long game. So number one, bring value to the equation. Bring value, what's in it for them. Offer that on the appointment. Number two, do what you said you were going to do and get them the results. Then number three, offer them the opportunity to continue doing business with you. Because here's the thing. It's like three rules to life, right? Number one, never tell anybody everything you know. Number two, Keep it simple. And number three, I'm not going to tell you because I'm not going to tell you everything there is that you need to know. You got to figure out that last part on your own, right? So never give them the, never give them the, never give them the whole thing, you know, just give them the, just, just put the tip in, you know what I'm saying? And then just work it out from there. Just inch by inch a little bit more. That got really weird really quick, didn't it? Hey, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, make sure you hit the thumbs up, leave a comment. I'm always leaving, I'm always reading the comments and replying to them and everything else. If you enjoy this, share it with somebody else. Turn the notifications on so that when we do put videos up on this channel, you get them. Go out there, set the appointments, bring the value, appeal to what's in it for them, FM, and you will win. We'll catch you next time.